everyone. We're with the Boston Sci-Fi Film Festival, and we're doing a panel mm -hmm. on females in film composing um, as sponsored by Women in Film and Video of New England. I'm Grace Mary Bariga, and I'm a film composer and the Secretary of Women in Film New England. Um, for this panel, I'm joined by some lovely women Allison Plant is a composer for film, TV, media, and a professor of film scoring at Berkeley College of Music. Heather Schmidt is a virtuoso pianist, composer, writer, filmmaker, artist, and animal rescuer. And Karen Zielinski is a Peruvian composer, record producer, and singer who works in various audiovisual products in Peru. So, to start the night out, I thought we can all, I could go around and say, what was your musical upbringing like? How did you start composing? And what got you into film scoring? Do you want to go alphabetically or? <laughs> <laughs> Feel free to go first, Allison. Sure. Um, so I uh, started out in music when I was about six. I uh, was given a recorder uh, by an uncle who was in into music and I took it to my parents and said, I want to learn to play this. And they said, wouldn't you rather learn something like a piano? And I said, no, I want to learn this. So I started with recorder. I played in Renaissance and Baroque recorder ensemble music for many, many years, starting when I was really little. About the same time I started composing. So it just didn't occur to me that that's not something you would do. So I did it. Um, <laughs> I just started to, you know, the more music I did, I would, you know, kind of come up with tunes. Um, when I started out, I needed help obviously notating it and trying to translating it from uh, whatever I had in my head or could play on my recorder to uh, notation. Um, later on, I started playing piano and then I did French horn in school. Um, and uh, then I also played in fife and drum because I grew up in Concord, Massachusetts. Um, and so we had these fife and drum marching ensembles. So uh, so that was, that's my musical background when I was little. Um, how I translated that into film composing, um, the same uncle <laughs> that gave me the recorder also took me to Universal Studios when I was just a few years older, maybe I was eight or nine. And I remember distinctly waiting in line for the movie ride there. And this was the 80s and they had, uh, just while you went to entertain you while you're waiting in line, they had a performer playing all these John Williams, mainly, uh, you know, universal movie themes. Uh, and it was this, I remember that being like this giant bank of synthesizers. I think this was pre-MIDI. So uh, each part had to be a separate synthesizer. Um, so I just remember being completely taken by this and also that being a moment of kind of clarity for me that there was such a thing as film music. Like, you know, I, I loved, uh, all, I knew all these themes. It brought to mind all these movies I'd seen. And I was like, oh, film music. <laughs> That's what I want to do. And so I went back to my grandparents after that and I wrote a, a sort of John williams -y, um piece. Like, <laughs> that, um, uh, actually, I submitted that to a, a contest for kids who could write music and um, it got orchestrated and performed by a live orchestra. Uh, so I remember that being this very formative moment. Um, later on, I uh, when I was in high school, um, what or reality set in or what I thought was reality, which is that, oh, that's not something people actually do. You don't actually, you, you know, film composing is not a thing you do. <laughs> that's just something I thought I'd do, but like clearly I'm going to do something else, right? So um, I started kind of down a path towards doing science, which is what my, my dad was a, uh, or is an astrophysicist. So um, I just figured that's what, that is, that's a thing you do. So, um, but then I got to college and I, uh, long story short, figured out through college, like, oh, actually, you know, um, no, it's, that's, I'm not going to do science. I'm going to do something with music. So I went back to that idea of, of film composing and tried to figure out um, how do you actually do this? And uh, long story short, it is something that you can do. Uh, you know, <laughs> it is a career path that uh, real people have and that it's a uh, possible to, um, you know, spend your life scoring movies. So uh, that's where I transitioned into. I love that. Um, Heather, would you like to go next? Sure. So I started out with 
group piano lessons when I was four years old. I come from a family of non-musicians. My parents were both optometrists. My dad was also a farmer. Uh, I basically come from farmers and optometrists. My brother's a mechan mechanical engineer, so I don't have any musicians in my immediate family. And my mom had signed me up for group piano lessons because there were no kids my age in the neighborhood. And her plan was to have me do a year of piano lessons uh, until I started kindergarten. And from the age of four, I was just hooked. I said, this is what I'm going to do. And I had a piano teacher who encouraged her students to compose also. So by the end of my first year of piano, when I was still four, I was already starting to compose. And I just, I love both performing and composing right from the start. So I started out on a classical path. I went to Indiana University for college. I was born and raised in Calgary, Alberta. So I was in Canada growing up. But then I went to Indiana University and then I went to Juilliard. And when I went to Juilliard, I took a composers and choreographers class. And I had always been interested in film along the way, but classical and film were up on the East Coast, especially at places like Juilliard is very separate. You're either a serious composer or you're not, and you can't really do film work in that vein. And so for a long time, I didn't. But the dancer that I worked with, uh, who was in the Composers and Choreographers program at Juilliard, ended up becoming a filmmaker and asked me to score one of his films. So that was my first film scoring. And I realized that I really did want to do that. And I realized that on the West Coast, it wasn't so strict that you could be both a serious classical composer and a serious film composer and that film composing is serious. <laughs> and my music had always had a very visual element to it. People for years uh, always said I should be a film composer because I would always have audiences saying that they would see pictures and hear, hear movies in my non-film music. And I love writing for orchestra, so it, it was just a really good fit. And then I eventually moved out to Los Angeles and started doing more and more film scoring. And, and that was actually when I kind of realized that I loved the film world completely and that I wanted to be doing more than just the story. So I now also write and direct my own movies and also still score other people's movies as well. That's an amazing story. Um, Karen, do you want to share? Oh, you're on mute. Sorry, my, I was in mute. Uh, hi, how are you? My English is a little rusty, so please, please be patient with me. Uh, I was like, well, I, I'm from Peru. Uh, Peru is a country that is not so much known for film composers. It's a um, profession that is very, um, it is in the, are, there are people that dedicate his work to that, but it's not so common to, to or not so known as a profession. Um, and I really, um, I was in a school that um, the music te teaching was very important. And I have a professor, a music professor that teach us a lot of theory of music, very fundamental things, uh, basic things. Or I don't know if that's how it is said. Um, but he taught us when I was uh, 13 years old, I think, uh, the theory of triads. <laughs> and it was like, a, oh, I can make voicing. <laughs> because I am always uh, been involved in music uh, since I was a little. Um, but I didn't know that I can create music. I, with those, uh, with those experience, I was like, uh, oh, I can create something. I can make melodies and I can make uh, voices with them. <laughs> and I make a first, uh, a first uh, piece, music piece, um, very basic with this uh, recorder, I think is said in English, uh, flutes. Uh, recorders this that every child <laughs> uh, plays that in school and 
well, it was a first uh, approach to the composing, to compose music. And I was like, I, I discover a passion in it. And so uh, I wanted to study music when I was, uh, uh, when I was, when I get out of, of school, when I was finished uh, the high school. And, but there's the same conversation with my parents that was like, you are gonna study music here in Peru? What would you make with that? <laughs> and so they want me to study in the university and the career that I found more compatible, or no sé cómo se dice eso, <laughs> was communication science, uh, cinema, um, that kind of publicity, that kind of media, no? But in, that career, I found that cinema was <laughs> something like that I really liked. Um, and, but I don't realize that uh, at that moment that I could make music for movies because movies here in that time now is uh, there are more um, industry right now. But in those days, uh, there was only one Peruvian movie in cinema or or two in a year or three in a year, there was very difficult to make uh, cinema here. Um, uh, and I thought, well, I can make songs or I can, um, I can become a composer, uh, a musical composer, not for, I, the, the word movie wasn't in my, in my mind. Uh, when I, uh, finish my studies in the university. I was making uh, at the same time. Um, I was um, study not in a university, not in a musical university, but I was making uh, music uh, with particular professors, um, and I was making jazz with uh, two friends. Uh, we we had a. a Three, uh, uh, um, a vocal, ¿cómo se dice eso? <laughs> a vocal trio, um, and we, I was very involved with the music circle in my country, in my in my city, um, and all the the people that I studied with in in my career were making then. Her, uh, their movies or their documentaries or the publicity or some some pieces of media of audiovisuals and they know that I uh, I was very involved with that <laughs> with that este, uh, with music and so they came to me to uh, to ask me to uh, make the music for uh, their projects and that was the first uh, approach that I have to make music to audiovisuals, and I found that I, that I uh, really enjoyed it, and so uh, it came more. Um, it became more um, common, uh, and I'm starting to make a lot of short films, uh, and then I have my first opportunity to make the music. Uh, for a future film for, uh, that calls uh, The Cleaner, El Limpiador. Uh, and the director um, was very young, was, a, um, a, a, was like uh, 23 years old, I think, when he made this movie. And he, he come with another friend of mine uh, to ask me to make the music. And, I really enjoyed that process. It was very, very, uh, I don't know, organic, uh, intense. Um, and I was uh, like, I, I understand that there was something that I wanted to explore. So I started uh, to focus on uh, learn more about that, that profession, about that, uh, about how do you o sea, to have more more ¿cómo se dice herramientas? <laughs> to have more uh, forms to get this job done um, 
And with this movie, I uh, I was nominated to a, a award, a very important award in Ibero-American industry, film industry that calls Platino Awards. I was nominated with two with two other composers that were composers in, in his fifties, <laughs> very very uh, uh, experimented composers. Uh, one was from Spain, the other from Argentina, and it was like a, a experience, very strange experience for me. And when when I. Uh, I, I won a, a, another prize and another award with that movie. And then I realized that I needed to study like a degree, a master or something that make me uh, understand not in an organic way this career, <laughs> uh, but in, in a, to have more um, more more knowledge about it so i decided to to go to spain i i took a master's degree in film scoring um, and i'm starting to i'm starting to 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 work really because when i came back uh, i wanted to share uh, my experience and i wanted to profess uh, to to make uh, to make the profession something more seriously in in this country uh, here for example it's very difficult to work with orchestras or to work with uh, uh, real musicians uh, a music for a movie uh, the most of the time uh, the music that do that you can or so the budgets that you can um, use are uh, really tight and you need to work with 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 computer with uh, with synthesizers or pads or electronic ways no and so i'm starting to to i'm starting to try to get the idea to to record it orchestras and to record it musicians and well it's a really big way long way uh, since that I think that I gave, I I go for another <laughs> for another is there uh, for another way of what was your question, but I think that I have uh, um, I really uh, I I follow like a path I follow like a, a like an organic way to 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 yeah. this career, you know. And I have um, I have diverse opportunities to to make different things. Well, thank you for that. Um, I'd love to talk about, um, you know, what is your composing process and how might that change for a sci-fi film? Um, maybe Heather could go first. Sure. So the process for each project is honestly a little bit different. For, for this particular film, this was the second film score that I had done with the same director. So we already had established a working relationship and had a really good communication process. And Steve was able to explain to me kind of what what he wanted and, and then let me do it. And then I'd come back and we'd have feedback. But we, we already had a collaboration set up and I find often in film scoring, the establishing the relationship with the director is is a whole process in itself and is probably the biggest part of what affects the process that's different than say composing a piece of concert music where you're just you can just start from scratch and write whatever you want. But when you're writing for film, you're part of a team. And the serving the ultimate vision of the movie and the director's vision of the movie is your job as the film composer. And so the process can be very different than if you're writing music for yourself. And I would say in general, my experience is that moving movies for sci-fi in that genre often have an element of soundscape in certain elements. There's this, the creating the world of the movie is a whole entity through the music, whether that's through instruments, through the sound, but as opposed to, for example, a straightforward drama where it might be more strictly instrumental, the sci-fi 
always has some other otherworldliness in the film. And there's part of that otherworldliness comes through the music. And so part of your job as a film composer in that, I think, is, is helping to establish the world. And so in the case of the film that I worked on that's in this festival, you know, there, there are some very classical moments. There are snippets of pieces like Claire de Lune, and it's the story of the artist as he's going in, in and out of these different mental states and, and entering these alternate realities and all these different things. And the, and the sci-fi element is, is very much, I think, captivated by the music enhancing what's already in the film in the way that the director envisioned. So I would say, yeah, the, the collaborative process in filmmaking is, is unique to this genre. Wonderful. Allison, do you want to talk about your process? Sure. Um, and I haven't scored any sci-fi films. I've scored a lot of documentaries and, um, and dramas and, um, you know, other, other things. I haven't um, gone into sci-fi unless you count uh, a puppet choice word that was <laughs> uh, set in space. But um, uh, yeah, so my scoring process, I, I'll just uh, second what Heather said. A lot of it's really about the collaboration. And so uh, the key thing I think is, is discovering that initial sound that's going to be the sound for the film. And so whether it's uh, building that whole world, uh, you know, uh, some alien landscape, or whether it's kind of getting into one character's head and, you know, finding that sound that uh, reflects their inner life. Um, that process is, I think, the it's both the thing I find most enjoyable and I think probably the key bedrock for any score. So uh, once you can kind of dial that in and uh, you and the director are, or I and the director are in agreement on like, okay, this is the sound, this is the kind of unique direction for the score. The rest of it is, is a lot easier because then you have your themes or your textures, um, you have your kind of sound palette set up and then it's sort of like you're there with your, uh, like if you were an, a visual artist, it's like, okay, now I have all my colors on my palette, I have my canvas primed, and now I just go and paint the, the scene. So, uh, yeah, so I think that's <coughs> the beginning, excuse me, the beginning of the process. Um, and then uh, a lot of it, the other thing is just going back and forth. So just being aware that, uh, you know, one of the other big differences from scoring concert music or anything non-collaborative is that, um, you know, any cue I write, I, I'll expect to go through several revisions on it. Um, you know, every once in a while I'll hit a hole in one, but um, a lot of times I'll, I'll expect to send a mock-up. So I'll, I'll make a, you know, a synthesized version, even if I'm going to have live players eventually, I'll send that to the director. They'll be able to hear it and watch it with the film and find, see pretty exactly what it's going to sound like. And then they can give me feedback. Um, and then it's that question of how do I translate what's, often dramatic feedback or hopefully dramatic feedback uh, into something musical. So if it's like, oh, you know, this needs to be um, more intense or uh, I need to, you know, the point of view of the music is too much for this character. I need it to be more for this character um, to have that uh, <laughs> ability to kind of find out that vocabulary that each director is using. And it's, it, it's all, almost like um, you create a private language with each each filmmaker. Uh, so you get to know that when they say they want it to be more dramatic, like what does that mean for this person? Um, you know, and how, you know, what does that mean in musicological terms? <laughs> um, and then, you know, make that happen. Wonderful. Karen, do you have any thoughts about the process and maybe what's how sci-fi might be different? Yes, I think Heather and Alison have said it already. It's like the relationship with the director is very important. You need to understand really what he wants with the film, what what is his vision or her vision. Um, I have like uh, some some uh, paths that I always do when I. Uh, begin the process of making the music of a movie. But it is true what Heather said, it, every every movie is particular, every movie needs some kind of sound uh, and needs to be treated in, in some special way. Um, 
but what I always do is immerse myself in the story uh, for a few weeks till the first ideas um, beginning to take shape and uh, in order to raise some sounds or motifs or melodies or um, but all of these I do uh, just when I have the talk with the director and know what he wants. And in this movie uh, that we that we work, that is El Corazón de la Luna, that is in, in will be uh, will be released in this festival, we had a particular process because I'm always work in three months or two months, but this uh, movie was like nine months. <laughs> I have nine months because uh, it was a, a very personal project of the director. And uh, the movie was uh, a project, uh, the, um, one of the big universities of here was producing it. So we have the, the budget to work, uh, to work with, with time and work uh, like with budget. <laughs> that is very important here. And when we were finding the sounds and everything, uh, it was like a very personal project of the director, but he, he has a, a really <laughs> strambotic vision of, <laughs> of, of, of this story. And um, we have a lot of, um, of uh, retroalimentation, uh, a lot of... Um, we talk a lot and we need to, it was very difficult to find the sound more than other movies that I have made. And, um, but it was very, uh, very intense, a very intense uh, process. And I think um, when we, we uh, when we closed the Posing process, there come the the COVID, <laughs> the COVID uh, quarantines, <laughs> and we need to to stop uh, the, the 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 production, and so I have like a month to to get rest, <laughs> to 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 think in other things, to focus in other things because I was like very saturated of the of the of the process because the movie is very uh, very intense. And when I came back, uh, I like it was, the work looks very uh, better. Uh, it the, the work works uh, works be was better for me because I had had the time to to understand what what the movie needed, you know. And so I make some corrections I with him, and then we could uh, record the orchestra and everything. But it was a very, a very intense process. Uh, I think that sci-fi movies have a, a, a special, uh, a special treat. Needs a special treat because they are very, um, uh, they are not conventional, no. And so uh, it was very important in this movie in particular. Uh, it hasn't. It, there's no dialogues, and so the music was like very important to to express uh, the things that we cannot understand with words. And so I think, uh, I think it is the, the most uh, difficult project that I, uh, that I have composed in, in the late, in lately, you know, in the, in the, in this, in these times, <laughs> I think, but yes, as so, a, yeah, no, it's not. Uh, that's what I can say about it. Wonderful. Well, you kind of went over a lot of the other questions I had about your, you know, composing process, director-composer relationship. Um, I just wanted to give some space to Heather and Karen. You both have films in this festival, um, Alchemy of Spirit, Heather, and El Corazon de la Luna, Karen. Um, you both just talked about them, but I was wondering, is there anything viewers should listen for when they go to watch the film? 
any part of the score that you're very proud of or you think was a good contribution? Karen, you could go first this time if you want. Uh, well, I think that the the main theme is like uh, very important to understand uh, the relationship between uh, the the principal character um, and what she is living inside, because uh, well, the 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 character is a woman, an old woman uh, that has lost his child, and uh, she always sings a lullaby. A lullaby, no. <laughs> she always sings a lullaby, and I, uh, I, no sé cómo decirlo. I. Um, work in this lullaby and this lullaby will uh, will um, I will construct this uh, this melody through through the movie and it would be uh, bringing some um, telling a story or so the, the melody will be telling a story or so between between the the what she sings and what we will see at the end um i think that's uh, something very special that i did because i uh, uh, when i work this i uh, recently have my own child and it was like a very special process because i was with all these motherhood <laughs> feelings um the movie was like very, I, I felt like very, um, very connected to the to the character. And the actress that plays it is uh, like very talented, very, uh, he or she has like 14 years, of, 40 years of experience or 50 years of career. And she never had this kind of, of, uh, of role. Um, and well, the project is special. Uh, everything is special in, in, in this project. It's, it's, I don't have the opportunity. I work here in, in, in an industry that is not an industry and not always have this kind of opportunities to make music for some so special project. And it's a, a very personal project. And, and I think all the, not only the music, uh, but the photography, the cinematography, or or uh, the, the 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 actors, uh, everything is like very very special. And I think that the music is one of the of the um, uh, of the um, <laughs> one of the the things that are, make part of all this work. No, that's what I can say. <laughs> Wonderful. Heather, is there anything people should listen for in your score? I think a big part of it is just letting the music be part of the film world. A couple of things that I will point out that are interesting if you want to take a listen for it. There are a couple of scenes that feature the main character playing music on a record player. So there, through that, you'll hear Chopin at the opening of Claire de Lune. And so fragments of some of those works are woven into the soundscape. So for example, Claire de Lune, which has a very distinctive opening, though there's another scene where the artist is in, in a less sense of reality. And the opening notes of Claire de Lune are spaced out kind of in a soundscape. So if you know Claire de Lune, you might recognize, it doesn't sound like Claire de Lune because it's soundscape and not piano, but there, there's a lot of little connections like that. The other one thing I will point out is one of the most important things about film scoring is that it's very much composed directly to the music of the film, meaning that, you know, literally frame by frame in a lot of scenes, you're making the music fit the score for the, for the movie. And there was this one section where the director was explaining to me what he wanted. 
And I have a, a concert piece for cello and piano that I felt would really fit the mood of what he wanted. And we laid in the whole track of this piece, which is a few minutes long. And it was it was really interesting because it it fit perfectly. It wasn't designed for the film, but the way the turns of the music brought out certain elements of the visuals. It was it was really interesting. So you will hear a live cello and piano piece at one point in the film. And that piece was actually pre-composed, nothing to do with the film, but laid in works really well. Everything else in the film was composed specifically directly to the film. Wow, that's a that's a great story about, you know, coincidence. Um so part of the panel that we wanted to highlight about um, female film composers and kind of celebrate all of us here as female film composers, but also to talk about really what we could do to change the industry. So many may know that there's a great inequality within male and female directors that has gotten a lot of press. However, many may not know that in 2020, 5% of all Hollywood composers working on movies were female. So I just wanted to open up the floor. Why is the composing industry behind in your point of view? And what are some of the challenges you face as a film composer in this day and age? Perhaps Allison go first. Sure. So, um, yeah, so first of all, I'll say 5% is uh, ridiculously low number. At the same time, it's twice what it was a few years ago. So uh, we are actually making progress. It's just that, you know, if you double a very small number, it's still a very small number. Um, but uh, uh, yeah, why is it that film composing is uh, so drastically low? I mean, uh, compared to even other areas where women have been underrepresented in film. Um, I am not entirely sure. I think part of the reason is that, um, uh, which it might be actually very similar to women directors, is that there's um, uh, some amount of pipeline problem. <laughs> like uh, most people get to be uh, at least the kind of A-list composers writing for studio films uh, by apprenticing essentially, uh, being a composer's assistant and then kind of uh, you know, eventually being given a break by the person you're working for and saying, hey, you know, here's a score where um, we'll give you, you know, have you write this score and I'll just kind of be on board to help you out. And then that launches them. That's one of the more common paths. Um, and that <laughs> pathway uh, wasn't, you know, open to as many women. So there's, uh, because, you know, up until very recently, like in the 80s, there were zero composer, uh, women composers. And so there were no women then to mentor the next level of women. Um, that's what I think is changing now, because I think now that we're starting to kind of break open the industry a, a little bit, like the more we can, um, you know, get any footholds, then uh, we have these wonderful organizations like like Women in Film and Video, Alliance for Women Film Composers, um, and, uh, and, and things like that. And then just we, we are able to kind of help other women uh, sort of up the pipeline. Um, what I've been trying to do as a teacher being at Berkeley College of Music is uh, to really make sure that I'm mentoring and supporting the women students there as well. I mean, obviously, I'm, I'm uh, supporting all the students, but uh, I've put uh, you know, particular effort into working with uh, the women there so that they um, can see themselves in the industry, so that they can uh, navigate those uh, those mentorship relationships uh, and uh, sort of uh, get them kind of on the ladder. And then it's up to them, obviously, to, to keep climbing up from there. Um, at Berkeley, we started when I uh, see I started teaching at Berkeley in 2008. And at that point, we had 20 percent of the film scoring majors were female. And at this point, we are up to 40 something, I think 42%. So again, we've doubled that number. Um, it's still not quite parity, but it's a lot better. And I think we're the bottom of the, the kind of, uh, or the top of the funnel, I guess, right? So if you start with uh, the students who want to get started, and then uh, the next level down might be these this kind of, um, uh, assistant positions and then or or people starting to freelance and getting uh to score student films and and other 
uh, smaller productions, and then you kind of funnel people in. Um, we haven't gotten to the point yet where people are at the bottom of the funnel. So there's a few, uh, <laughs> that's why we're up to 5%, uh, uh, but there's, uh, you know, we still have some people waiting to kind of work through that system. And that just wasn't open to a lot of women before this. Thank you for your point of view. And also letting everyone know Allison was a mentor to me throughout Berkeley. So she's definitely helping the industry. Um, Karen, do you have um, any thoughts about this? Yes, well, I think that uh, that what said Alison from the associations, the, the, the movement that is uh, these kind of panels, or uh, I think there is more discussion about this now uh the subject is on the table and it um it is very um good for 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 this issue uh, here in my in my case here in in peru uh i don't felt that kind of um um I don't feel this, o sea, the same problems that you have there because there are no so much people making, uh, o sea, there's, there is not a big industry here. The places are like, um, there's space. <laughs> uh, uh, people are not uh, like, um, the, the things are more equal because uh, o sea, it's not uh, developed yet. I don't know if you understand me, but when I have the opportunity to work in other industries like in Spain or in Argentina or when, when I have these kind of opportunities, I always felt uh, this kind of, of look of underestimated because I, I'm a woman, because this is a profession that is usually made by men. <laughs> And I felt, for example, the first movie that I uh, uh, that I um, write in, in the, the, uh, that I work in Spain, the first time <laughs> you have to to think I am a Peruvian composer uh, woman <laughs> Latin American, <laughs> so I have all the I have buy all the tickets <laughs> and like uh, the first project that we do um the director was a woman so it was like very good the relationship was, was very good uh, we were very good but then at the end of the process the the the, the production um come with the figure of a music editor for example no and I didn't understand because here I do everything. So I edit the music, I write the music, I put it on <laughs> on the picture, and I didn't understand why I needed a, a, a music editor. So I didn't, I didn't, I write for the picture. So I I didn't gave a music uh, ten tracks or something like that. I'm always be very um, specific with with which I, I write. And so um, this music editor was a man and was a very experimented uh, composer there. And he was very kind. And he told me, well, we, we will uh, uh, respect what you, what you, are, uh, you have composed and don't be worried and everything. And then I gave them the stamps because <laughs> what can I do? <laughs> And at the end, he didn't do nothing. Uh, he just cut two seconds of a music piece uh, to make it longer, um, to make it last longer. And he said to the producers, there's nothing to, <laughs> to do. So I, I, the work is OK. And then the next movies uh, were uh, without that feature. So I, I work like uh, with freedom. But I think uh, the amount of energy that one has to put in showing what you are capable of do, uh, I think it is more higher 
it is more higher in, in, in a woman than in a man. So I think that that um, there's something in the industry worldwide that uh, thinks that a man can do the work better than a woman. And I don't focus on that when I when when I'm uh, working in some some project, but it is a fact. Um, and it's good to have these kind of panels to to talk about this because uh, it's not good. <laughs> That's one of the of the of the experience that I have had. But for example, the when I was nominated in this uh, award, um, I was 32 years old, and the two composers that were very kind to. Uh, <laughs> were like 60 or 50 years old and they when I'm approached to them and present me uh, present myself they were I never forget that look that they gave to me it was like, it was like and it this was in 2014 so we didn't have this kind of panels we didn't have so this this issue was not in 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 the in the table and they were like no, I don't know how do you say this in English, but, but in Spanish is me barrieron con la mirada de arriba abajo, no? O sea, to, to up, down, uh, an up, down look. And so it was like, they were very kind uh, then, but it, the first look, I didn't forget it because it was like, what are you doing here? <laughs> no, and so on. Well, that, that, there's that kind of things you have to, to to experience in this kind of profession when you are a woman. Thank you for sharing that personal story. Um, Heather, do you have any thoughts about the inequality? I have a couple thoughts about it. There, there's sort of two streams for me in this topic with regards to women in music. And the, the first is that it's not just in film music, it's in any kind of composing that women are very underrepresented. When I was a music major at Indiana University, for instance, it, it, it's interesting to me in certain areas of music, you know, orchestra performers, soloists, chamber musicians, it's pretty much evened out where it's equal women and men. But if you look at composers, whether it's concert composers, film composers, and also conductors, there's a huge, huge difference in the number of women versus men. And I think there's a couple of reasons for that. One, I think, is that it stems from the tradition of the past. For example, if you look at Fanny and Felix Mendelssohn, who were brother and sister, they were both very talented composers and pianists. Felix Mendelssohn is the famous composer everybody knows because he was a boy and he was allowed to go out and tour and compose professionally. Fanny was by all accounts, as talented as her brother. She composed over 500 works in her time, but her family forbid her to be a musician in public because it was not appropriate for a woman. And so I think there is some residual side effects of that. What I don't totally understand is why it's so exclusive to composing and conducting versus performing in general, because women were not allowed to perform to the same extent either, but that has really shifted. So. I don't have an answer for that, but I think some of it stems from traditions of the past. And then with film music, I think one of the big issues is that it is a very collaborative process. Filmmakers and film directors spend a lot of time with the composers they work with. And in my experience, they typically hire their buddies. They, the guy directors, hire composers who are guys who they hang out with because they're gonna be spending hours and hours together working on it. And it's it's not just the composers, but it's it's every every key position in a film. It, you have to spend so much time with the other people in those positions. You want to hire people that you know and like as people. And guys typically are going to go for their guy friends as opposed to some woman composer they don't know. I mean, it's it's very much the film, the film world is very much who you know, who you've got relationships with, as much or more than than the actual music skills in some cases. And I think the fact that there are so few women composers is partly because there's so few women directors. You know, if there were more women directors, there'd probably be more teams of women editors, women producers, women composers. 
So I think there's the additional buddy element in film music that makes it especially hard for women to break into those roles. Uh, I don't think that's the exclusive reason, but I do think that's a huge component of it. And like we've already been discussing, I think the fact that there are groups that kind of highlight the importance of women in music, panels like this that address the topic and, and especially the importance of having mentors for women available. I think all of those things little by little will, will start to change change the path. But like any of these changes in history in any discipline, it takes a very long time for those changes to really become full scale and to really achieve the level of change that we would ideally like to see. But I think there's definitely at least baby steps being made and this panel is one of them. Wonderful. Um, so I, with the last 10 minutes or so, I was wondering if we could go around and just say how we're going to promote diversity, some of our goals, and then also just discuss any projects that you're working on and um, kind of promote yourself. Uh, sorry, Karen, you could go first. Uh, what was the question? Sorry, because I didn't understand it so well. Oh, sorry about that. How should we promote diversity going forward in the film composing? Well, I think what you say uh, of the mentorship, um, of collaborating each other, uh, I don't like to, to, to use I have heard so many times of other men composers or other uh, colleagues in sound, uh, in sound here, in sound um, areas, that we sometimes victimize ourselves with this kind of, of issues. No? Um, I think that we need to uh, maybe what what Heather said about the directors, the women directors, the editing, or so the other the other um, areas that are involved in a film. Um, I think that we need to 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 show with our work, with with what we can do, with what talk with other. Um, with other composers, um, the the union, the 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 union in this kind of of uh, issues is very important, and I think that when you have uh, the opportunity to share with other uh, people that came um, that are studying or that are have the 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 interest in this, I think they're. Uh, now I think uh, there's more interest in women uh, to make this. I have the opportunity to to make some workshops here, and uh, there's like very, a lot of women that want to know about more about more this kind of profession. Um, but it's not enough. Uh, the the uh, there are more men uh, um, than women, no. But we need to share. I think I, I don't have the answer. Uh, I think we need to to um, to use the the tools that we have to the fact that I am a Peruvian composer and I am talking in a language that it's not my mother language and I am trying to make me understand with both, uh, the three of you that are uh, um, that are from from a country that has an industry that has uh, uh, that has other 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 culture and other uh, visions and everything is uh, is uh, like a, um, like a muestra. <laughs> it's like um, a fact that uh, we are um, open it 
we are open to uh, to to a global uh, issue of this. So I don't know if I am explaining good, but <laughs> I think it's important to to continue to make uh, this kind of, of panels and to continue to make this kind kind of events from composers from other countries too. No, there are you, I I know a lot of com of female composers from Latin, Latin America, from Spain, or for, from Ibero-American composers that has the same issue, um, the same issue. And I have a, a, a friend that uh, said to me that she was, uh, she goes in Madrid to uh, work. Um, they were, um, being a composer, and when she goes to this office to to give his his CV, <laughs> his his her pardon her her when she gets to the work to to go to this interview, they told her we 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 are looking for a men composer, not a woman composer. <laughs> it is very uh, it is. It is very, very um, frustrated. I don't know. I don't know what we should do. I think that what we are doing is a good uh, thing. Talking about this, uh, there are associations now. Um, the issue is there, and and I think we need, as Heather said, it it uh, it will will take a lot of time, maybe, but we are constructing something here. With our work and with with this kind of, of panels. Thank you for that. We <laughs> only have a couple minutes, but um, if Allison or Heather have something short to just add to that, sure, I can say something short. So um, I think a few things. One, uh, in addition to what I've already talked about with with mentorship and things like that. Um, I think that the the two things that we heard in our own stories, the the, the three of us, include like this sense of um, you know not realizing this is something you can do. I think that's double for people who are not white men, right? So I mean, I think it, it's actually somewhat true for everybody that you know it might not be obvious that film composing is a is a career path, or you might be in a country like Peru where it may you know be especially hard because maybe there isn't a clear path. But um, I think it, to add on to that, that you don't see uh, other women or people of your nationality or whatever, um, I think that is an additional barrier. So anything that we can do to increase visibility of uh, all the kind of amazing people working in this field, I think is really important. I mean, again, as a teacher, I have that opportunity in what um, examples I can show in class and things like that, and to be sort of deliberate in the, making those choices. So representation, uh, and visibility is one piece of it. And then I, um, I think the other thing is just uh, helping people get over that hump of that experience that we all have at some point, like Karen described, of um, you know having having that look, you know, being walking into the room and having that that kind of sense of like everybody thinks you you don't belong there or that you don't. Uh, it doesn't yes, don't focus there. on that. <laughs> yeah, um, yeah, and I think I think the to the extent we can support each other in that and uh, and sort of validate, yeah, you know, that's an experience I've had too. Here's how I've you know kind of gotten past that because we all have this sort of um, uh, what's the word um, imposter syndrome, right? So we are we're already thinking that about ourselves anyway. We don't need other people to look at us that way. That just you know. Uh, confirms the worst inner voices. So I think having s somebody outside of us say, "Yeah, yeah, don't listen to them, and don't listen to your inner voice." Like I believe in you, and I know you can do this. I think the more we can do that for each other, the better. So those are the two kind of uh, key things I think. And then I think the thing that everybody watching this can do is just sort of make a resolution to um, find uh, more diversity and to seek that out deliberately because it's been hidden for so long because the you know, uh, the the sisters of the composers have been like uh, overshadowed and not allowed to do their thing. You, we have to like deliberately go out and find them. 
Um, so I did. I, I haven't scored for sci-fi, but I'm a big sci-fi fan, as you can see from my Star Trek memorabilia back there. Um, you know, I, I spent a year saying, okay, you know what? I'm going to deliberately, for every book I read uh, by a, a white male author, I'm going to follow that by somebody who's a woman or a person of color or you know, not a white male uh, sci-fi author. And it was amazing. I, I really found uh, new favorite authors that I wouldn't have known about p potentially if I hadn't gone out and deliberately found them because they're just hidden. They're, they're amazing things out there that we could all find. I love that resolution. Um, we have about one minute. Heather, do you have any thoughts? I think just echoing what everyone said, the mentoring, talking about it. And I think when you have the opportunity to create diversity, to do that. So for example, for me, now that I'm starting to do film directing as well, I'm very conscious of having women in key roles. The last film that I did, the producer was female, the editor was a female woman of color. You know, I think just again, awareness and and fighting for that when you have the chance and then just doing the best work that you can and showing everyone that, yes, we are just as good as everybody else out there that's already been doing this for a while. Wonderful. Well, I want to thank all three of you for being so open and generous with your time. Um, this is the Boston Sci-Fi Film Festival a panel sponsored by Woman in Film New England. Thank you for watching.